I don't really know why my dad became an artist. It was just inside of him. His parents were not artists. He did not know any professional artists. His father was a minister and his mother was a homemaker. He had four brothers. They grew up in West Texas all over in very small little towns during the Depression. Now he did do drawings in high school and he did pencil drawings of pinup girls, of famous politicians that would have their pictures in the paper. I think maybe he even did some cartoons for a high school newspaper. So he was already kind of interested in it then. World War II came along, he uh, joined the Navy, so he became a corpsman in the Marines and he was in the South Pacific. So during the war, he did a lot of drawings and cartoons of his buddies and things that were going on. And when he got out of the Marines, the great thing was the GI Bill had come along so he could go to school. And so he decided to go to art school. And he went to the Kansas City Art Institute in Kansas City. Once he graduated, they thought, we deserve a little break. So they kind of left on a tour of the West and they camped out in national parks. They ended up going to Alaska with my dad's brother and his wife and they stayed there three years. There, there were no jobs in the art field there, so he was a policeman. Uh, because he had, he, as he said, he could write a report and shoot a gun because he had been in the war and so they needed some people and he got hired on. So after three years, they were tired of the long, dark, cold winters and they came back south and uh, he got a job at the Martin Marietta Missile Company in Denver where a friend of his worked and he s got signed on as a security guard. Of course, his plan was he knew they had a huge illustration department because they built uh, satellites and missiles and all kinds of things for the government. He went to the library and got a book on how to read blueprints. And so he could go into the interview, yes, I can read blueprints. <laughs> and he just figured it out as he went along. A lot of these illustrators in the art department all wanted to do something different in the field of art than just illustrate satellites. So he had a friend who had a gallery up in Georgetown. He was selling little paintings of the mountains and things up there, and so Dad said, oh, that sounds like a really good idea. As a child, I remember going out on the weekends to Georgetown, Silverton, Silver Plume. He would paint those buildings in the mountains, and he started selling them in the Georgetown Gallery. And so apparently someone came in one day and said, you know, if that painting had a horse in it, I would buy it. So Roy Kurzweil, who owned the gallery, told my dad that, and he said, I can do that. And he started painting horses and it just kind of took off from there. He just never looked back. Then the big fabulous Cowboy Hall of Fame that they called it at the time, Western and Art Museum in Oklahoma City was being opened in 65 and the man that knew this man asked for a recommendation and he said, oh Jim Boren up there in Denver would just be great. Well dad did not have any museum business uh, experience at all, but he loved Western art. He was a good painter at this time. And he's one of those creative people who could build all kinds of things. He could figure out how to do it. So he got hired as the art director in Oklahoma City, and he really hit it off with a lot of those guys. They had uh, similar goals. They all loved the Western lifestyle. They all admired the work of uh, Remington and Russell. And Melvin Warren became a good friend of his. And of course, they always went on annual trail rides and the guys just, you know, sat around the campfire and chit-chatted and rode horses and did sketches and things. And So by 1970, he had been at the museum five years, and he had been painting every evening and every weekend. He worked like crazy because that's what he really wanted to do, and he felt like he was losing money by staying at his day job. So he took a year off and he did great, and so in 71, then he felt like, he could make it just uh, selling his artwork, and so they wanted to move. Melvin Warren and Lucille Warren said, oh, come to Texas, come to Bosque County. We came down here and Joanne had four or five farms, ranches lined up, and so we had a caravan and we went around and looked at all of them and we got here and this was known as the hog farm because Earl Corpier owned it. It was, uh, he had 1,500 hogs way down in the far corner. Mother and Dad decided we're going to buy that hog farm, provided he moves all the hogs because they didn't, they didn't want hogs. Dad wanted some cows and horses. And so that's how we ended up here. It was simply because of Mel and Lucille. Well, my dad was a really nice guy. He, just, he was just wonderful. He was a wonderful father. He was just the greatest guy in the world. And 
I don't know how he had the time to give back to the community like he did, but he did. Um, he served on the hospital board for quite a few years. He was a president of the Chamber of Commerce. He was a mentor for Martin Greeley. Uh, Martin would bring, even in high school, I believe, Martin would have to tell you when that started, but he would bring groups of paintings over and Dad would give him a critique. Uh, there were other artists that would come here from somewhere else in Texas. They would drive up with a carload of paintings and they'd get them all out and wait for, <laughs> wait for the word, you know, but Dad was always giving them encouragement as well as helpful criticism. Of course, I grew up listening to his critiques of all these other people's paintings. So I feel like I learned a lot kind of just by osmosis. He mostly always, well always, uh, emphasized the basics. Composition, value structure, color scheme. He really w did not talk about style. He, I think he, like most artists, feel like style just kind of comes, like with your handwriting. Um, and that's kind of a personal choice, but if you, if you stick with the basics and you have those covered, then you can work in whatever medium or style you want to. He didn't have much sympathy for people who whined around and complained that they needed a lot of elaborate stuff to do their work. You just got on with it. And he had a deadline, and he had a strong work ethic, and he just got the paintings done. And he worked out there sometimes till 10 o'clock every night. He felt like it was a job, but of course it was a job he had worked a long time to be able right. to do. But it, a lot of times, and I think writers and, and people will give you this advice if you're reading about how to get through a writer's block or an artist's block, you just show up. You show up in front of the easel, and once you start sitting there and looking at it, you'll so finally say, okay, well, I could do this. Oh, well, okay, I could do this. And before you know it, you're involved in your creation again, and you keep coming up with ideas, but it doesn't always happen when you're in watching TV. It happens when you're sitting there and you're saying, okay, I'm just gonna let, let my mind work on this, and it happens, but yes, you do have to show up. You do have to just right. get with it. Thank you.